Well, back in the 50s, I suppose, there were many cars around the roads and uh, cycling to school and cycling everywhere. So I just, uh, I happened to be better than the other lads, pushing and shoving each other. And I think the first one was during the races in Ballantagar. There was a cycle race from the Spall to Dingle. And all the lads from the Spall and Dingle as well, and they all entered the race. 30 or 40 was in fact a big crowd started in this fall and uh, I was one of them and I won it into Dingle. So of course that made a big man of me in them days and uh, that was the first race I cycled in. I said well my parents bought me a racing bicycle then so I was top of the class. It was hard to beat me and I'd done a lot of training of course. I'd alternate my runs. One morning I would do, go around Slay Head and maybe that evening I would go over Connor Pass. In the morning, sometimes before work, I would do Connor Hill, over the hill. I always cycled from the Dingle side. I think the reason being <laughs> that when I was coming back, I didn't have to do Connor Hill. Our house was right at the bridge under the river. So I'd have my shower in the river under the bridge. <laughs> 56, we had a very strong Kerry team. They were very good. And um, I was quite up there, in fact. So I had the yellow jersey from Clonmel for the last day to Dublin. Paddy Moriarty won the last stage. In fact, of the eight stages, Kerry Riders won five stages out of the eight. And that was it, a glorious year for me. I was the winner of the Ross, king of the cycling world. <laughs> uh, when we came to Lisboa to Garinador, at Anthony's Bar or Sullivan's Bar in Garinador, there was bone foils there, uh, the same as they often had for the footballers, and uh, Tarslight procession, you know, when there were the, uh, the pike, the hay fork, and the saddy turf stuck on the top of it and dipped in paraffin oil and in fire. So if you can imagine with this procession and everybody and anybody from this ball was out for it. Well, I, I don't appreciate it half. You know, it was really, 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 it must have been wonderful altogether. We had thousands of leaflets printed in five languages that were to be distributed in the stands if we were not allowed to compete. Well, we nearly knew that we wouldn't be allowed to compete. We were taken in the back of a van to a hiding in Melbourne. The day of the race came and we were put in the back of the van. Irish cycling team handwritten up in the, the van and taken to the starting line in the Broad Meadows. We had jerseys with Ireland in the back and the front. We left tracksuits on as long as we could, uh, Irish supporters. And they came onto the track with photographers to get our story. Officials saw spectators as they thought on the track and they came out to remove them and they saw us. We held up the race for 20 minutes. It got worldwide publicity and the police were very sympathetic with us and what was the reason or what have you. And we wouldn't move for the police either and uh, well they got a warrant from, for our arrest. We were released without charge, giving back our bikes, and that was the end of the story. <laughs>